Corporation, which has been in Cleveland since 1911. I just recently announced plans to move to Ireland, uh, uh, losing obviously all the revenue and the prestige and jobs of a, of, of a corporate headquarters. And, and that's sort of the reminder that we face uh, a continuously competitive process on, on the corporate rate. Uh, there's just a story this morning that KPMG says that uh, all of our competitors have been chipping away at their corporate rate all through the last decade, and so that the U.S. rate, uh, which was one time much lower than, than world average, is now much higher. And, that, and there's been no progress in the United States since 1986, uh, when President Reagan achieved the great epic uh, tax reform of, of, of that year. And that, in fact, is the model that we're looking for here, here uh, in, at the end of 2012 or in somewhere into 2013, is to replicate that enormous success of the 1986 Tax Reform Act, which I'm sure Grover, of course, will uh, talk, talk, talk more about. In fact, we actually, the Rate Coalition, uh, is a, a bipartisan group, has an op-ed in, in uh, the Hill, hill.com, this morning on exactly this topic of parallels between uh, 1986 and, and 2012, potentially. So um, with that, I would like to first introduce uh, uh, Congressman Pat Tiberi. Uh, a Republican from Ohio. Uh, he was born and bred in, in Columbus. He uh, was in the Ohio State Marching Band, right where his career peaked. Uh, um, but then, since then, uh, was elected to the Ohio State Legislature, uh, where he proposed to be the majority leader. Uh, was elected to the U.S. House in 2000, and is now uh, a senior member of the House Ways and Means Committee, where he chairs the, the, the Select Committee on, on, on Revenues. And he's been a champion of our issue. We've done events with him around the country on this topic. Uh, he knows full well in a state, in a city like Cleveland, just how much of the local economy uh, depends on corporate headquarters. You know, these are good jobs and high wages, and, and the kind of jobs that no city, uh, or for that matter, state or country, uh, wants to lose. And so, with that, uh, we'll have uh, Congressman T. Berry talk a little bit, and then we'll turn it over to Robert. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Jim. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Jim, some would, argue, some would argue that my career peaked at McDonald's at 16, <laughs> flipping burgers in Columbus, Ohio. So we have. I'm going to switch. Going in and out. We uh, we are lucky to have a organization like Rate be part of what I believe is an important an important role in helping us move tax reform. In 1986, there were organizations like RAPE that helped move the ball forward, educate not only inside Washington, D.C., but, but outside Washington, D.C., giving us momentum. And certainly, Jim, your organization has been, been doing that. I was lucky enough to be part of a, a presentation that you all did in, in Columbus, Ohio, at Ohio State, which was quite successful in making people aware of what we needed to do. I mean, think about it. Here we are in the 21st century. It'd be nice to have a 21st century tax code, which uh, we hardly have. So we have, as Jim said, the highest corporate tax rate in the industrialized world. And as he mentioned, uh, the decade of my birth, there were 179 corporate headquarters in, in the United States located here. There's now 133. And in fact, in the last 12 years, we've also seen a, a decline uh, I said that wrong. In the last 12 years, we've gone from 179 to 133. In the decade of my birth, in 1960, before I was born, 17 of the largest public companies in the world were headquartered in the United States of America. Today, there are six. We continue to lose ground. We have continued to lose ground to countries all over the world who have continued to lower their tax code to attract capital. And it's, you know, it's a matter of fairness. It's a matter of economic growth. It's a matter of capital. But it's so much more than that. It's about jobs, sure. It's, it's that simple. But Jim just hit on a point that I want to expand upon, that we never talk about in the context of this debate, that we need to talk about in the context of this debate. There are some on Capitol Hill that say the only way we can get new revenue is to raise taxes from the existing people who pay taxes. We have a, an 8% plus unemployment right now for over 42 straight consecutive months. Think about if we had 
a 6% unemployment rate or a 5% unemployment rate. You had more people paying taxes. You get more revenue. Further, if we had 17 of the top 20 corporate headquarters headquartered in the United States instead of just six, think about all those good jobs that would be here in the United States, not somewhere else. The best jobs of any corporate headquarter are in the city where it's located. And that is so extremely important in any community that you're in. You think about Columbus, Ohio, for example. If you go to Columbus, Ohio, we have a number of corporate headquarters located there. You've probably heard of a few. Nationwide Insurance, headquartered long time in Columbus, Ohio. If you go to the Children's Hospital in, in Columbus, it's called the Nationwide Children's Hospital. Why? Because they gave a boatload of money to the hospital for naming rights, all in support of, of helping kids, helping kids who have horrible diseases, capital improvements, and they didn't just stop there. Their executives give. If you go to Ohio State University, the hospital there is named the Wexner Medical Center. Now, Mr. Wexner is a guy who founded a company called Limited, the Limited Brands. Uh, for those of you who don't know what that is, Victoria's Secrets. Probably everybody knows who that is, or what that is. $25 million gift to Ohio State. But it's even more than that. It's not just big companies. It's, it's medium-sized companies. We have Wendy's International, headquartered now back in, in, in Dublin, Ohio, founded by a guy named David Thomas. David Thomas, the late David Thomas, started a Center for Adoption located in Columbus, Ohio, because of his generosity. You see, when somebody is working in the community and living in the community, and you all know what it's like, they're going to participate. They're not, they're not going to just go away and not invest in the community. And, and part of what our governor has done, John Kasich, on the tax code, and he argued about the competitiveness of the tax code from a state perspective, because we weren't just losing jobs in Ohio to, to India and China, we were losing them to Indiana. Well, it's about competitiveness of the tax code. 